One CNC provides a very robust, straightforward, easy approach to creating geometry. You can use absolute coordinate input, incremental coordinate input, you can grid snap like I'm doing here, or you can reference off of existing geometry. Now for example, I'm going to create an arc that's tangent to those three lines. And now using the new XR6 scissor sketch tool, I can quickly drag a line through the areas I'd like to trim off. Now creating fillets and chamfers are just as easy. Simply enter the value, then select the geometry to create that fillet or chamfer. One CNC also provides many can shapes. For example, here's a bolt hole pattern we're going to snap to the center of that arc. And now I'm going to create a couple of circles that are referenced off the center of that existing circle there. And now using the alter command, I can easily change the location and the shape. If we want to rotate this, we'll select it. We'll go to our rotate, select the origin, use the digital compass, and quickly rotate the part. Notice how I can also move the geometry by a theoretical intersection to accurately line it up with the origin. Now let's take a look at dimensioning. We're going to start with vertical dimensions, and I'll create just a couple over here on the left-hand side. How about horizontal? We'll go up here, horizontal dimensions. Let's make one more. Let's make a radial dimension now. That looks good. Now to cross-hatch this, we'll select the geometry, select hatch, select the hatch style, and then click OK. Now let's take a look at working with solid models. We're going to demonstrate the extrude tools. Extrude curves allows me to digitize a boundary, enter a value, or dynamically snap the extrusion. I can use extrude cut to cut pockets or to cut holes all the way through the part. Using extrude boss, I can grab the shape and I can quickly create a boss. Using the shell command, I can set the shell thickness and then select the sides I want to have removed. And there's the shell. Let's make some uh, chamfers now. So notice that when I go into the chamfer command, the part turns translucent. This makes it easy to select the edges at the very bottom. We'll rotate that around and you can see there's the chamfers. How about a couple of fillets? We'll create a fillet at the base of the boss and also at the very bottom of the pocket. So I'm going to select the base of the boss, the bottom of the pocket, and there you go. Now let's use construction planes to create geometry on different sides. I just created a construction plane on that side. And I told one CNC to change the view so that we're coplanar with that. So I'm going to create some arcs here. You can use coordinate input, but I'm just snapping these to speed this up. I'm using the line tangent tool there. Let's use the trim scissors command to get rid of that geometry. And now we'll use extrude cut to cut that slot through there. Perfect. So let's do that again. We're going to use construction planes. I'm going to create a construction plane on that face. I'm going to tell one CNC to change the view so we're coplanar with that. I'm going to create a circle right at the very center of that face. And then instead of using extrude cut, why don't we use extrude boss? Now remember, you can enter a value or you can simply snap the dimension. Now let's put a fillet at the very base of that. That looks great. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hide the blue wireframe geometry. So I'm going to tell one CNC to select everything that's blue, and then using the blank tool, we can hide it without deleting. Let's take a look at surfaces now. Here's some wireframe geometry. We're going to start with cross-sectional surfaces. Now, what you do here is you select as many cross-sections as you'd like, and then one CNC will stretch the surface across the cross-sections. Now we're taking a look at the four-edge surface. This is where you select four edges and one CNC will create that surface. What's interesting and very powerful about this command is that each edge can be comprised of several entities. So here's an example of that. Right hand mouse click. And let's use the four edge one more time here. There's our third edge and there's our fourth edge. Right click and there we go. Now I'm going to select the, the uh, three surfaces on the far right here. And using the mirror command I can simply sketch a mirror line and quickly mirror that geometry. Let's continue on with this shape. I'm going to bring up this layer here. I'm going to go back to the four edge surface command and let's use it to create this shape. What's interesting about this boundary is that we have arcs that move up through X, Y, and Z. So it's a very versatile surface. Here's the surface from curves. This quickly creates surfaces that use flat boundaries. Let's bring our other layer back up again. Now using hybrid modeling, I'm going to convert those surfaces into a solid model. Once we've done that, I can easily come back and add a fillet. For example, here's a 125 thousandths radius fillet on the top. Let's put a 200 thousandths fillet on the bottom. Now I'm going to use the subtraction tool in just a second, but before I do that, I want to hide this blue wireframe geometry. So let's select that and use the blank tool. So here's a keyboard or keypad shape I made. I'm going to subtract that from the model, and there you go. Very, very powerful and quick. Let's take a look at creating prints. Here's a solid model. 
we're going to go into our pages command. I'm going to select a template here. And then I'm simply just going to start selecting views. Here's a top view. Here's a front view. How about a right view? Look how easy it is to snap those. I'm going to go back to model space. Going to create a cross section here. Add to page manager. We'll go back into our pages and notice now there's a new view of that cross section. We can place that anywhere we'd like. Now let's make another cross section. This time we'll use a construction plane. So there's our construction plane. We'll go back into page space and now I'm going to say create a section from that plane. That looks great and there we go. Now what's nice about this is this print is associative to the model. So here you can see we have three circles. I'm going to use the extrude cut command to quickly drill some holes through there. And while we're at it, why don't we fill up these holes? So we'll use the remove a hole command and to grab those shapes there. Now if we go back into page space and use the update page command, what we're going to do now is see that the print's going to update. So at this point, all we need to do is just add our standard dimension. So we'll go back and use our standard tools here. Here's a vertical dimension. Here's a horizontal dimension coming up here soon, right here. And then we'll add another dimension up in the upper left-hand corner.